Right, okay, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm uh, in the warmth of your Upload Towers. I'm gonna to do a uh, what's in the bag 2018. And we're at the end of 2018, but it's pretty much stayed the same all year. I've been asked to do this video uh, on a number of occasions throughout the year. And the reason I haven't done it is because all year I've been intending to change. The main thing was to Consider changing my irons, I suppose, and also you'll see that I've got an issue in the sort of top end of the bag as well. And I've not resolved any of them, to be quite honest with you. I spend that much time messing around with uh, and testing different golf clubs for all the videos that we do, that my own bag gets neglected. So uh, I think maybe a few people think I uh, chop and change quite frequently, but it's probably the complete opposite, to be honest with you. If I look back and do the what's in the bag from uh, whenever the last one I did, it's not gonna be that different. So that's the reason I've not bothered doing anything as of yet, but I'll give you the update, tell you where I'm at, and uh, I'll explain why the irons is something that I still might be considering changing in uh, during these winter months if I get the chance. Anyway, so we'll start off, let's start off at the lower end of the bag, and this is a change, I see, so we're starting off with a change. And it's the putter. And I did a review of this, uh, Oh, that's quite a good shot, isn't it? Look at that. How clever was that? Not intended, and I can't get it in focus because my head's popping through. Uh, it's a Sigma 2. It's the Fetch model. And I did a review of this not so long ago. Um, and if I'm honest with you, on purely based on looks, I'm not that keen on it. And I wasn't keen on the finish. I wasn't keen on the colours. And I got out on the course, and this is the adjustable putter in terms of length, um, from ping but it also had this face insert that offered both hard and soft feel yeah a bit weird i know two different pieces of material i think some people thought i'd gone a little bit mad in my description they'd actually probably somehow achieve both of those things which like i said sounds a little bit crazy but for my mind it really works and in terms of my putting stroke very much a straight putting stroke at least it tries to be it has seemed to have worked really really well um so that's something that i've probably always dabbled with putters more than i have with anything else i suppose in terms of changing on a regular basis so it's the uh, ping fetch model at the moment and like i said as it stands i'm quite enjoying that so uh into the wedges um and again these things will be similar to what they've been from the previous year so i gain um two wedges uh from ping uh, glide wedges um, 54 and 58 in terms of uh, lofts and then I jump into I basically I mean I like these glide wedges I like the black finish on those and I like the feel the softness of the feel that they, they offer um, pretty <laughs> but I'm going to explain something here because the next let, let's get to this bit the next wedge I use is this it's this 64 degree high toe wedge. Yes, 64 degree high toe wedge. It's got this um, copper finish, I suppose you'd call it. It's very much uh, looking very scruffy now because it's had a bit of a hammer in this year. A bit of a story behind that one is that that club was sent to me via TaylorMade for review and they said the 64 degree was the only sample they had that I could have to test. And if I'm honest with you, when they said 64 degrees, I thought maybe we'll give it a miss because I honestly would not go near a uh, golf club with that amount of loft before. Never tried it. Took it out for testing and it's become a club that I really do like and probably maybe a bit too much at times. Maybe I go to it too often. But in the video that I did in the video review of, uh, of this club, even though it had 64 degrees loft on it i just found it so versatile in the amount of different shots that i was able to hit that we did a video earlier on in the week um testing out a seed golf ball and all the shots that you see me hit on there are pretty much with that 64 degree a short game shots that is uh, so whether they be low flighted uh, or thrown right up into the air they are with this 64 degree wedge which i find a bit bizarre like i said not something i would have ever uh, gone to but it's meant that i maybe just use it that little bit too often uh in the sh in every short game scenario i'll use it from bunkers as well um so maybe that's meant that the two ping wedges the uh, 54 and 58 have got slightly pushed to one side and they could almost they're not getting a great deal of use because the next club i go up to is a pitching wedge 
uh, probably just slightly the other way around here and I should have started with a 64 and worked upwards um, but pitching wedge and again a comment made on a video not so long ago uh, so pitching wedge being what but I just explained so I use tailor-made P770 irons from pitching wedge through to uh, through to seven iron I have to think about that one for a minute forge club I've had these lofts have been uh, strengthened slightly by a degree, degree and a half and that's because I into the longer irons into a 6, 5 and 4 iron I use the tailor made P790s so we'll get to that bit in a minute but let's get sticking with the wedge story now the wedge is again something that I play quite a lot of so 64 degree wedge and 2 in the middle and then down to the pitching wedge and the two in the middle almost get neglected again because I really like playing. This is something that someone commented on a video, um, whatever it was, what were we doing? Well, I don't know, but they commented that uh, it's a pitching wedge 125 yards and I, on the same video, I chose to play a seven iron at 150 yards and they said, wow, that gapping is just not right. And in theory, yes, it's not right because if you're talking about full shots, then, and it's a full shot wedge downwind and it's half a seven iron. So, you've got to take in quite a few different factors when you're looking at yardages and what club you choose to play unless you just play everything at full tilt and I don't so I like playing a wedge a pitching wedge in this case in a number of different distances so whereas a lot of people might choose an 80 yard wedge shot and it's a full 54 full 52 I much more prefer to play uh, a pitching wedge in it half a shot so that's where my wedge game is a little bit different than a lot of people's may be and my those two clubs the two ping clubs are probably two of the least used clubs in my bag as it pans out but that's my wedge story now where's my chair squeaking uh from wedge i then go into nine nine seven nine six and like i said and then we go into once we get to six iron and i've got one here out oh my god i've got four iron We've seen them. You can't get focus when something else is in shot. I don't know why I even bothered. But the P790s, again, um, I had to have the P770s uh, adjusted, like I said, to meet up with the lofts and, and make sure the gapping was right into the longer irons. P790s and this P770 set has been something that I would tinker with. Uh, love the feel out the forge clubs of the P770s. I don't think you get the fe same feel out the P790s. And for me, there are clubs in the longer end of the bag that have come around since I've tried these this season, this 2018, that have been um, more forgiving, easier to hit, whatever the terminology may be. And like I said, from a lot of irons I've uh, looked at even recently, and I'm even looking at the likes of when I get to uh, the ZU85 uh, utility irons from Strixon, I'd even consider sort of playing them in five iron and four iron. So there's lots of things that this might change, like I said, in the months ahead. But just for me, uh, I'm going through a real um, change in mentality with the irons at the moment. I just seem to have been, I went from MP5, classic blade I suppose, into something that bridged the gap again into a sort of easier hitting iron, but still a very compact iron in the P770s forged. But I might, uh, like I said, even go one step further and just hit something that's just even more forgiving, just maybe a little bit more bulk. I don't know, I've just got such a dilemma. It's so many irons at the moment and I still think that life is easier than trying to struggle away with the, the clubs that I've currently got. But anyway, that's why I've held off. So I go into four iron and then from four iron, I go into a three iron. And a three iron being a ZU um, 65, yeah, uh, from Strixon from two years ago. Uh, again, forged driving iron, 20 degrees aloft on this Miyazaki stiff shaft. Um, something that, again, has been pretty much a go-to club, something that I really like to use from the tee. Happy enough to take it from the fairway as well. Um, and it's starting to get into the realms of once to go from four iron in about the sort of 185, 190 mark. We're then going into this, which is uh, sort of around that 200, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, 205, 210. Um, that's the next club up in the bag for me and this is where it gets a bit interesting it's where I go from here up to the driver and we all probably know what the driver is 
But you'll also probably know that for a number of you who watch most of the videos, I carry this hybrid, again, carried it for a long time, I don't know, more than a year or so, I think. Um, it's the Epic Hybrid, it's a three hybrid. It's got 20 degrees of loft, but it's notched down one degree, so I'll play it at 19 degrees. Uh, it's got one of the UST uh, recoil shafts in it. Um, you can see by the club face, and again, I'll try and get focused, but probably struggle in this light. Yeah, not great. Uh, another waste of time. Uh, it's had a fair old batter in this club. I lost the head cover fairly recently as well, so that doesn't, uh, it's not going to help it. But it's had a lot of use. Uh, once again, really like playing it from the tee. One degree difference in terms of loft, but in terms of distance, probably considerably different. Again, another 15 yards. It's a maybe on a good day. If I'm swinging a ball, hitting it out the middle, then I'm getting sort of 215, 220 carry out of that um, three wood. It's an absolute, it's, it's a little rocket as far as I'm concerned. And I try and I don't, a lot of hybrids uh, struggle not to hit that sort of uh, right to left shot. It happens with this, don't get me wrong, but I tend to be able to, it get, I get on with it. The combination shaft head combination, I really get on with it. And then I go up to that 220 and then everything stops. There is nothing between, and I'll get the drive out for people who have not watched uh, my videos because uh, you, most of you will know what this is. It's a T400 Max. Um, it's nine degrees loft. It's got the CB Alter stiff shaft in it. Pretty much straightforward, off the shelf jobby uh, set at standard loft as well. And it's a club that I mentioned earlier on in the year. It's been uh, one of the best drivers I've played in in years, really. Most consistent in terms of performance. I'm still hit and miss with it. It's still something I struggle with in terms of my uh, own game. But uh, I think for me, definitely the most forgiving driver still out there on the marketplace and uh, yeah really got on with that uh, this last 12 months or so but there's a void there and like I said the void is that bit in the middle so I've got 225 to driver and driver I'm not overly long as you well know so good day I don't know 240 to 250 off the tee carry would be uh, realistic for me um, but I have got that void and the void is from 225 up to driver and there's not many times that really you're looking for anything in between, I don't suppose, but it is the odd occasion when it's sort of either, again, looking for something more consistent off the tee uh, and longer than the hybrid. Maybe an into par fives, you'd have the odd chance of a pop up, but again, not me really, I'm not that kind of, I'm not overly long, like I said, so I don't miss it, but I think that I would still like to find a three wood that I get on with, uh, which I haven't done for a long, long time really, because I've always carried a three wood. I used to, for many years, play three wood off the tee. It was uh, an, an old Mizuno club that I had for a long, long time, and I don't know why I ever got rid of it. I used to love playing that from the tee box. Uh, since then, I've I found a lot of clubs over this last couple of years, I've been reviewing them, that I've got along with when I tee it up. Really struggled to find a three wood that I can pick up consistently off the floor and have confidence as it as, uh, as a fairway wood. So, um, yeah. I'd still like to, so they're the two issues that I have, I'd like to fill that void up at that top end, maybe carry a three wood that I, I really get on with. And like I said, the irons is something that I will still uh, carry on this dilemma over the winter. And I reckon I'll sort that out be before or when the new season starts back into the March time. Right, onto golf ball, dead simple. I use the TaylorMade TP5. Uh, for me, it's just something I've got on very, very well with. Uh, it's a consistent performer. Kind of know what it does. Yeah when I'm playing well, I, no, nothing does anything unless you're putting a decent strike on it, as you well know. Um, again, something I've carried for quite some time is the uh, Bushnell. It's a uh, Bushnell Tour uh, version uh, V3. Um, so again, that's quite an old product. I don't know how old it is, but it's had a few batteries I've gone through. It's been around for a while. Uh, Glove-wise, and again, I don't know if anyone's interested in this kind of stuff. I love that glove at the minute. It's, uh, it was from last year, actually, back in the last year. It's a Foot Joy, and I can't even remember the name of it, does it tell you me? But it's got, uh, it's Rain Grip, it's called. Actually, that's got the name in it. That suede finish is fantastic. It really does work in the wet. And uh, a glove I bought on Monday is this new Ping uh, glove. And again, I don't know what that's called. And I still don't know what that's called. But I like it. My bag is alongside me, my favorite bag, and I'll, uh, Show you. I'll I'll, uh, I'll put the camera down that and give you a closer look at that. Uh, that's my tailor-made uh, bag that I absolutely adore. Love carrying on the trolley. It's been broken up on the inside uh, in terms of the um, dividers. 
to enable me to fit a camera down the middle of it. So I've wrecked it a little bit. Um, and not wrecked it, we'll call it bespoke. Changed it a little bit. That's me. That's all I carry. Like I said, I don't know whether, I don't know whether a few people might be surprised at the clubs that I've got, because they're still, like I said, the same clubs, what I've had for quite some time. Not a lot of changes. Um, albeit probably down to time more than anything. Time and money, I suppose. I don't like buying a set of golf clubs and then parting with them a few months later, even though I'm very positive about the reviews that I do. I love the product that I test and I love trying out new stuff. And there's been some great stuff this year. Honestly, there's been some really great product. A lot of it that you could easily gain and put in the bag, uh, but I sort of uh, hesitate to do that. Try and stick with what I've got and uh, work out the swing, which is always the, the, the bad bit, I'm afraid. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. For me, it's uh, now what I use. It's a strange one, really. It's, some people like to know what it is, so there you go. That's what it is, and uh, as ever, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon. We'll do another one of these. I think it may be early 2019, and just see how much of a change, if any, there has been.